The things we want doesn't give us the power of God. It's when God begins to exist and exist and continue to exist in you. The Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. He did not die, but he had to, because of the human body that he had assumed as the Messiah, he had to lay down everything. As he died, you have to remember this, he was killing the, the sin that was in the, in the, in the world. Amen. It wasn't him dying, it was the sin that was dying. Right. The things that was influencing the people. So here... The angel says, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Hey, I want to tell you something. When you think of the Lord, He is not on the cross. Amen. He is not in the grave. Amen. He is not a baby anymore. Amen. Don't celebrate those for the sake of celebrating. Those that just remind, you know, remembrance of what happened, the history. You have to look to this point that we are looking at. He has risen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. Let's continue here. Verse 6. He is not here, but he has been resurrected. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee. Saying, the Son of Man must be betrayed in, into the hands of the sinful men, be crucified, and rise on the third day. They remembered his words. Returning from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven, to all the and to all the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanne, Ma Mary, the mother of James, and the other women uh, uh, with them were telling the apostles these things. But these words seemed like nonsense to them. They did not believe the woman. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. When he stood, when, when he stood to look in, he saw only the linen clothes. So he went home amazed at what had happened. Even the disciples could not understand what Jesus had said, how was going to rise. Remember, these are the people that, that walked to them. Even them they could not understand. They missed the point as well. They are running to the grave instead of standing still to say, where is he going to show up next? Yeah. The same happens when we have problems and troubles in our lives. We are looking for ways out. We are looking where, we are looking where can we get the help from. But the Lord is saying, stand still and see my salvation. Sometimes you may be going through trials and problems and tribulations. You even fail to recognize God's presence is right there. Remember we looked at the, the word I am. I will be your helper in times of trouble. That's what the scripture says. I shall be what I've said I will be. I will be your God. I will be your protector. I will be your provider. I will provide for you. All you need to do is have faith and believe that yes. God has said he, his words does not go back to him void. He watches over his words to perform it. They forgot that the Messiah was coming to defeat the power of sin and death. He did not come for political reasons. So they are confused. Even these people walked with them. They are confused. Let, let me tell you one thing. You can have 20 Bibles in your home. You still get confused. You don't know the Messiah if you don't understand who God is. You can know scriptures, but you don't understand them. You can have Bible verses on your fridge and everywhere, but you don't understand them. You need a spiritual revelation from the power and the presence of God and the Holy Spirit to bring the Word of God to you because you are a living person. You are not a physical person. When you try to understand the Word of God in the flesh, you will fail. It doesn't make sense. It is useless. To them it was useless. When you try to understand your circumstance and the things you are going through in your life, you are not going to understand them. You will be disappointed. You will think God doesn't exist. You will begin to question the existence of God because you are looking at your circumstance with a fleshly eye and yet you are a spiritual person. Come on, come on. Amen. The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hopeful. Yes. 
Things no, the evidence of what? Things not, seen. things not seen. Let me tell you one thing. Even in the darkness, even when it's not looking like it, even when it's not looking like it's looking what I want, I will still praise God. I will still glorify God because Yahweh is Yahweh. Yahweh is Yahweh. He never changes. He is forever. He is the God. He is the Messiah. He is the King of Kings. He never changes. Hey, your circumstance may change. He never changes. You change. He doesn't change. And he will not change to suit your, your interest. He wants you to change to suit his best interest. We want God to change and to do things our way. But God is saying, retain to me and I will retain to you. Very simple principle. Let me tell you, God is still God even if cancer takes one of your beloved ones. God remains God. When my father died, I had prayed for my father, I had cried to God to save him, but my father died. That did not change my opinion of who God is. God is still God, whether you are in the storm or you are not in the storm. Whether you are happy or you are not happy, God is still happy. God is still God. God never changes. God never fails. Whether you, you think you are failing, God is winning. All he wants is your attention. Faith is such a powerful instrument that causes or provokes the heart of God to act. When you have faith in God, even when everything is crumbling down, faith will provoke God to act on your behalf. Yeah. It's got my problem. But don't just say that religiously without going on your knees. Go on your knees. Plead your case before God. Our God is still a God who answers prayer. Our God is still a God who acts when you pray. Our God is still a God who can answer by fire. Yes. Don't just be too religious to say, I have faith and yet you don't act. L let me tell you, when you are just religious, you are not going to feel the presence of God. No. Let me tell you. Take off the religious garment and let God see through you and tell God, be God to me. Be what you say you will be. May you be what you say you will be so that I can be what you say I am. I want to demonstrate your character. I want to demonstrate your nature. I want to walk in the power of the resurrection. I want when I speak, I don't just speak with the authority from this world, but the authority of the word of God, the authority of the power of God. I want when I pray, I pray with the authority of God. Come on, when you pray with your power of God, things begin to shake. Things begin to shake. When you pray with the power of God, you can feel it. You can get it in. It's in you. It comes out of you. You cannot understand the heart of God if you have never gone through stuff. You can never give a testimony that you have never experienced before. You can't preach what you have never experienced before. That is religion. Preach what you have experienced. Speak what you have seen. Speak what you have heard. Speak what the word of God says. Then you will see the power of God. God is taking you through where you are going through or what you are going through in order to prepare you for the next assignment they reject you so that he can accept you yeah. they push you away so that he can push you in Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. they discourage you so that he can encourage you yeah. they demoralize you so that he can empower you yeah. <laughs> they speak all evil so that he can speak good about you because yeah. you sent cross to the cross Jesus would rather die for you than to remain in the paradise because he loves you that much. That's right. I said last night, there is no any other gospel apart from the gospel of the saving grace of God. Amen. God came as a man. He would rather die. A God who dies, but he had to die. Why? Because salvation is very important. For you to live in the power of the resurrection is very important. God gave you the power. He is risen today. He has demonstrated that you can rise again. 
You can rise from your situation. You can rise from your past. You can rise from your failure. You can rise from everything that has been putting you down. You can rise and you will rise. You will rise now because life is now. Christ acts now. It's not tomorrow. It's not to anywhere, any day. But today is your day. If you are going to give your heart to God and say, God, may I begin to walk in what you want me to walk in. You will see it. You will see it. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Christ has risen. Christ has risen. Because he has risen, I live today. Because he has risen, I have life today. Because he has risen, I have power today. Because he has risen, I have a voice to glorify his holy name. Because he has risen, I can sing, I can shout. I know he is my God. Because he has risen, I will not be depressed. I will not be depressed. I am not defined by material stuff. Even when we don't have food to us, my wife and I, we are happy. Money or any other sin things does not describe us. I don't preach to get rich. I don't preach to get fame. I don't preach to do what? I preach because I understand the passion and the compassion of Jesus Christ for the lost soul. I would rather see souls in the kingdom of God than sit in my comfortability. God is looking for you to do something for the kingdom of God. Amen. He can use you. Amen. And he will use you. Amen. Because he has reason. You don't need permission to preach the gospel. You don't need permission to go and speak the gospel. You need no permission to share the word of God. He has given you permission because he had to go and die. And he had to, and he had to go and pay the price. He paid the price so that you can open your mouth and share the gospel to the people. Share the encouragement to the people. Yes. Do you understand what Jesus did on the cross? If you do, why are you depressed? Why are you so focused about what people say to you and not what the word of God say to you? This thing here you see, it is your life. It is your manual to life. Not what people say to you. The word of God is your manual to live a powerful life. I have learned one thing in my life. I have learned to tune off my ears from other disturbers, stumbling blocks. I do get a very good wise advice from people i got men of god who speak in my life and i know when they speak i listen but there's things that i don't listen to anything that does not provoke me to do more for god i don't need it keep it to yourself i want somebody of a passion i want somebody with a with a cry in their heart to say we want to do more we want to see the kingdom of god move forward because it's the kingdom of god that changed our lives All right. You are depressed because you have given your ears to everything. You know that your ears are the spiritual gates? Yep. Yes. Did you know that? Yep. What you hear is what you become. What you hear is what goes into your heart. And what you, what, what you allow to go in your heart, that's what you become. It discouraged people. They did not just wake up one day and discourage. Because somebody told them you are ugly. Somebody told them you are not good enough. Somebody told them, ah, you, you, you are not articulate. Let me tell you, even in my Southern African accent, I can still bring the gospel to the people because it's not about my accent. It's about what he did on the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, I began to understand the passion. I began to understand the compassion. You need salvation. And that's why we preach the gospel. Amen. We preach the gospel because mankind, we all need the salvation. You need something, God to God. You, are, you need something, God to God. You want to do something, God to God. You need no permission. Yes, you need some wise counsel, but I want to tell you this. You need no permission to go and cry out to God and say, God, do what you say you will do. Be what you say you shall be. I want to see your hand. I want to see your hand. I am sick and tired of religion that just talks nice Christianity and it has no power. I'm a Christian. What have you done for God? Nothing. 
The resurrection is not something that is out there. It is here right now. You are the resurrection. You are the reason for the resurrection. And the Bible here says what? For if we have been joined with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Hey guys, get tired of religion. Seek this, the real stuff. Get God is real. He is real. He is real. He is not a man-made God. He is not a man-made God. God, He is real. As He told Moses, I will be who I will be. I am who I am. Adonai Yahweh Elohim. I will be what I say I will be. I am uncreated one. I am uncreated self-existence. He's not a man-made God. He is alive. He is alive. If you don't see He's alive in me, He is alive. He is no longer in the grave. He is alive in me. And you can see Him right now. He is alive. I'm saying this to tell you this. What God says, He will be to you. You don't have to go and chase this. Chase after anything. Chase after God. Remain in within the realm where God wants you to be. Remain in the house of God. Remain with the people of God. And God is going to bring what you are looking for. Don't doubt God. Don't doubt the presence of God. Don't doubt the power of God. God is closer where you are sitting right now. God is with you. He is with you in your storm. He is with you in your situation and in your problem. He is a God who can never abandon you. I want you to know that man may abandon you. Man may abandon you. God will never abandon his own people.